This is a three-part series. In part one, we're going to show how to install the software. First of all, you want to search for the official project on GitHub. Click on the link. You can see the source code for the release version. If you scroll down, there's a way to get into the project details. Click on the I Understand button, then look on the left. What we want to do is the prerequisite install. First thing you have to do is install VS Code. So click on that link. Hopefully you're using Windows because I can't get my M1 Mac to work with this. Installing VS Code is easy. You just click on the file and keep on clicking on Next, accept the agreement. All right, when you finish it, it will launch. The next step is to install Platform IO. So you don't really need to click on that link. You could just click on this button and start typing it in, and it will find it and click the Install button. Then you wait a few minutes while it does stuff. Now you have to install Git. For that, you do click on the link. Download for Windows. Do the 64-bit uh, version, or the main, main button works. Just run that. It asks you a bunch of stuff. You just click Next for everything, and keep on clicking the Next button many times, maybe 50 times. Finally, it, it will install. You don't need to launch that. All right, now we have to install the serial driver for the ST debugger. Click on the link. This is sort of an old style installer. You scroll down a little bit, click download. If you just open the zip, run the exe, it should install no problem. All right. Now you have to install Cube Programmer. You usually don't directly use this, but it's important to install it for VS Code to work. So for this, you have to register. It's going to ask you for your email. And you're going to put it in, and it will send you a link to confirm. And then it will spam you ruthlessly. So. Be prepared to get a lot of emails from them marketing you things, and you can unsubscribe to all of that. You run this setup. Accept the agreement, hit next. Say you understand. Next, next, next. All right, when this runs, the first thing I do is go to this hamburger menu, and I go to the bottom where it says help and user preference, and I uncheck this box because they send personal information about you, and since they spam you so much, I really don't trust what they're going to do with it and they kind of hide that in the menu system, so go there and uncheck it if you want. So now, on the GitHub site, there's a video you can watch on how to do the rest of it, but I created my own instructions, so this is me doing it. 
what you want to do is go to the code and click copy the uh, address and then go into that alien thing and it might take like a minute or two to initialize but if you scroll down to the bottom you can say clone get project so do that and then you paste in that address here and it's going to ask you where you want to do your development work so pick some spot that's logical like the documents folder you could create um, a new subfolder I call I created one called development go ahead and pick something and say that you trust them and now you could look around you can see the, the different source code and you know the LCD libraries and stuff like that but if you want to build it you have to click on uh, on the alien again but the first thing you want to do is pick which branch you want to build and if you go to the bottom left you can see it says release STM32 black pill you can go with release or you could go with development it changes all the time I'm not sure which one would be more reliable for you um, just be prepared for certain things to not always work so try one or try the other but click on the alien and then that one that says all PCB ST link you want to open that up by clicking on that arrow so it pops open and you can I click build you can click upload probably but I like to build it first to make sure it's gonna work if this doesn't work it could mean your installs bad I've had PCs where it didn't work on The build did work though, so you get your ST link. And if you look at the writing, it's you want that second row for the for the um, the clock and the the I/O and the ground and and the 3.3 volts. You want to hook those up to the the pins with the same labels on the STM32. And you could look at how my colors work, but your colors will probably be different. But just trace it through and do it the same way and then you can click on the upload button and that's powered by USB supposedly you have to be careful about keeping that 3.3 volt thing connected if you're also powering it from the PCB I've heard that that could cause a problem so if you're powered by the PCB um, PCB then I would unplug that 3.3 volt pin so this computer it just worked on the first time and I actually had trouble with this ST link not working on my other computer and I thought maybe it was defective but it's really not it's every time this has happened moving to a different PC has solved my problem so don't don't give up if things don't work on the first time I had to try a few different PCs I'm not sure what the conflict is but people can help you on the, the either the official discord or the Facebook group so now if you're using my build kit you want to get the Nexteon editor because I provide a 2.8 inch display and most people use a 2.4 inch display and so you have to retarget this LCD file it's called an HMI file and it's really simple to do so you just load up the HMI file you can see where to find it you can go to that left menu and go back to the code by hitting this top button and go to where it says LCD HMI and you can find out what folder that's in by saying reveal in file explorer and that will show you where it is you want to load that into the editor when it's loaded you have to hit the device button in the upper right and since my I use the display upside down you have to do the 270 degree orientation and now 
you may have the basic device or the discovery device. Some people have one, some people have the other. They're about the same. So if one doesn't work, use the other one. But select the 28, which means 2.8. And you just select it and hit OK. And what that does is it makes it work on that. So now what you can do is hit the compile button and make sure that it's happy and it worked. So now you have to export this as a .tft file. So you click on TFT file output and save it. And you want to move that to a 32 gigabyte FAT32 SD card and put it into the display. And then when the display powers up, it will load this. After it's done loading, all you have to do is um, kill the power to it, give it power again, um, but remove the SD card first so that it doesn't try to reload that. And then it should boot up the software. So uh, stay tuned for part two where we'll assemble the PCB connectors. Good luck and have fun.